you know, I talk a lot about the heart of God, and um, I do that because the Holy Spirit has impressed things upon me. I guess without knowing it, he's impressed certain things about the heart of God that he's done it so, for so long that it is so common to me that I, I don't really uh, think of it as a subject. I think of it as just finding out what is the heart of God and what is the heart uh, in relationship to the Lamb and to his heart in relationship to us. Um, and today I want to share on, uh, the title would be, God is Prospecting for Gold. And um, uh, there's a particular thing in relationship to this. That I want to go through the scriptures with you and just see um, the heart of God in this instead of some of the things that we would normally see. <clears throat> um, and so I'll start just with the story of the in the 1800s. Um, there was a gold rush that happened in California, and people were not only coming from the East Coast to go to the West Coast to look for gold, but people were coming from, literally from all over the world to go to California to dig. Uh, some of them panned for gold in rivers. Many of them dug mines. They dug down deep into the earth, and they dug down to... Um, to, to find gold deep, you know, instead of just a nugget that would be in a river, to find what they called veins, veins of gold. And uh, it was hard work. They didn't have any heavy machinery. They had pickaxes for the most part. And um, they did it by hand. And, um, and if they found even just one small nugget of gold, of course, um, man, the joy, the joy that they had of, of just finding that one nugget. And um, that's, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the, the heart of God in relationship to finding gold within us and how big that is to Him uh, and how much it rejoices His heart. And, and also I want to talk about it in relationship to many of the things that we do that maybe even bring forth gold Maybe we're doing it because it's the right thing or, you know, whatever reason we're using. But maybe we never really take into consideration the effect it has on him. And so I want to talk about that. I want to start with the story, excuse me, in Acts chapter 3, and uh, starting with verse 1. And most of, of you are familiar with this. Um, uh, verse 1 says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, gold, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping, and he leaping, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the, at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why ye look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness that we have made this man walk? So you got you got uh, Peter uh, and John coming in, and, and um, this man asked for alms from them, and he said, he said, I don't have gold. Well, he, he did have gold. He had the nature of the Lord. He had the spirit of the Lord. 
And so he, he didn't have those things to give, but he had that heart that would touch somebody that most other people wouldn't touch or think worthy of anything and, and release that gold. And God saw it, and, and the, the, the man was walking and leaping and praising God. And it not only healed him, but it, and this is just another angle of this, but it not only healed him, but it opened the door where he was no longer on the outside of the temple. He was not just a, uh, a believer in Israel, you could say. He was in Israel. He is in the land. But now he's in the temple. He's in, he is in there with the Lord. And he's able to enter into things of the Lord that he could not enter in before. And this, this, this gold in Peter released something. And we're going to see that, that thing all the way through. Um, but also notice down at the bottom as we read that um, uh, he, he didn't have gold, but he had this attribute. And when people came to him and uh, started lifting him up, he immediately said, don't attribute this to me. This is gold. And you know gold rep in the Bible represents deity. This is gold. This is is you know there's a saying used to be said people would go oh that's golden or that's gold it is th he knew it wasn't him and he didn't he didn't take what was gold and attribute it to brass or attribute it to something that was lesser uh, a lesser mineral as it were and then also in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 in verse 9 We'll read 9 through 14, and here again this subject of gold comes up, and the temple comes up, and these things, um, these things that uh, affect the Lord. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. So he says, you're, you're God's building. And, he'll, and just shortly after this, he's going to say, you're God's temple. You're God's building. And I have laid the foundation. <clears throat> and another build it thereon. And there are other people that add stuff also. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. And, and if you'll notice the context, he's really saying, take heed what materials you add to the temple because he's going to describe it in terms of m what materials are you adding um, for for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ so he's laid Jesus Christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold Paul is adding gold to your temple or to the temple of God he's not just adding Christian things to it. He's literally adding Christ. He's adding deity. He's adding what God calls gold. But others are adding other things. Um, uh, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest. Okay, so what's going to manifest what, what you're really adding? What's going to be the fire? Um, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. There is a revelation of gold that comes through fire and loss and hurt and whatever, where the Lamb's nature can begin to manifest through us. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And I think recently I was teaching and I attributed that verse to Revelation, but here it is. It's the kind of work it is. Is it stubble? Is you know, or is it gold? Is are we adding Christ? Uh, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. So uh, Paul didn't add Christian ministry, and he didn't add doctrines, and he didn't add Christian involvements. He's literally bringing glory to God by adding gold to it, and. And he built Christ into the temple, which is just huge. And, you know, the question is begged, uh, what, what, what are we adding? What are we adding to the temple? What are we bringing to it? And the scripture says that the fire will reveal Christ in you. He'll, the fire will reveal Christ. 
We're waiting for Christ to be revealed. But the fire is going to be the thing that will take away the dross, separate the dross, and reveal the gold. And that's, and that's what union with the Lamb is all about. That's where you're going to find the real thing. Um, and then, um, uh, then I wrote this down. When God gets gold, it reaches his heart. Remember I was talking about that prospector? Uh, and um, if he found just one nugget of gold, he would rejoice. He'd been looking for it. That's what he would give in his life to gone up into the hills where nobody was and just live a life of prospector looking for that. And even so, God is prospecting for gold and he's looking for Christ out of us in that way. And when God gets gold, it reaches his heart in a special way. And I'll just say this, in Luke 15, just consider this, in Luke 15 it talks about the, the, the lamb that was astray and brought back to that flock for the altars, um, that spirit of the Lamb that is reinstated in them. And what does it say? He called together his friends and his neighbors and said, come rejoice with me. That's the heart of God. That's what's going on in him when, when he finds that gold. And so this woman loses a gold coin and she's looking all over for it. And he and the woman that finds it, she calls her neighbors and her friends and says, Come, rejoice with me. There's this rejoicing in God. And the, even the elder son, when the prodigal came home, Why do you throw this big party? And he says, Isn't it fitting that we rejoice? There's, for God, when he finds this gold within us, which is the Lamb of God, when he finds this in us, it, it does something special to him. And he rejoices, and he wants everybody to rejoice with him. But sadly, a lot of times we we may lay down our life, and it may really be Jesus. But we never take into we never join with him in the in the rejoicing and in the feast and in the joy that's going on. We never do that. We never get. We never think about him. We go, well, I did what God wanted me to do. I I I gave him Christ. But we're missing out on the fact of how big this is to him and how much he rejoices when he can find this in us. <clears throat> and then in 1 Timothy 2.9, this talks about women, and I want to compare it over with 1 Peter. Uh, but 1 Timothy 2.9, um, and this is a perfect example. We think it's about adopting Christian ways when it is about the gold. It's about Christ. Uh, this is 1 Timothy 2.9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. And then I want to add to that 1 Peter 3, verse 3 and 4 says, Who's adorning? Let it not be, it's not the outward. He's saying don't let it be the outward thing. Don't. It's, he's not saying don't put on outward things. He's saying don't let that be the emphasis. And by not putting on those things, you're still making the outward the, the emphasis. So who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, of wearing gold, or of putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Who's that sound like? It's Jesus. It's the Lamb, which is in the sight of God great price. I'm telling you over and over when it brings up this true spirit of gold, because that's the true spirit of gold, it's big to him and he rejoices. And we, we sometimes just go right through life and never, we do all these things, maybe even it's Christ, maybe it's gold in us, but we never join in with him in his rejoicing. And he wants to gather us and say, this is big to me. This touches my heart. I want you to know this rejoices my heart. This, this turns my heart. Um, so uh, that's the true goal. That's the meek and quiet fear, this land that is within us. Um, and then uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 6 and 7, starting with verse 6 and 7. Wherein you greatly desire, uh, greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, 
that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ, meaning when he's appearing in us, when finally that gold starts appearing in us. Notice so many of the same things over and over. In these scriptures, there is this thing of, of uh, showing the Lamb's spirit. If need be, you're in heaviness through these things. And, it's, and, and I love the wording here. It says, that the trial of your faith. In other words, you're going through this for, uh, so that God can get gold. We just go, I'm going through trials. Why didn't God take it away? This clearly says, if need be, if he thinks the need is that you need to go through these things, he does it that the trial of your faith, and he calls it more precious than gold. There it is again. What, not just let Christ come out of you and say, well, I did it, and praise God. And that's wonderful. There's a whole reality in that. But let's lift it higher to his rejoicing, as it again says right here, that it might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the gold, at the appearing of Christ. And then verse 18 through 21, the same, same chapter. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation or manner of life received by tra traditions from your Father, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, but with the precious blood as of Christ as a lamb. This is gold. This is precious to him. See, we say, well, he's saying it's precious to us because the blood saves us. He's saying it's the precious blood of, of Christ as of a lamb. It's this, this incredible preciousness to his heart. Uh, without blemish and spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. This gold was foreordained to be found in us. Um, but was manifest in these last times for you. And the manifestation is, is first and foremost that he finds that in us. Who by him, the Lamb, do believe in God. That raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith, that your faith might not stand, but that your faith and hope might be in God. God is prospecting for this gold. He's prospecting to such a degree that he is uh, literally allowing circumstances to happen to us, not because he's not with us, but because he is with us. Because he is prospecting for gold. And when he finds it, when we respond with Christ, we should not just go, well, praise God, you know, that was my duty, or this is my you know, what I, I should do to be a living sacrifice, my reasonable service. We have no clue that he's going, look, I found something that I, I, you know, I love, and I love to see it in you, and I love to find it there. And it touches him. And again, all of those examples in, in Luke 15, come, rejoice with me. Don't just do it. Realize the effect it has on his heart. And how special that it, these things are to him. And then finally in uh, Revelation 21, uh, we'll read uh, several different ver uh, verses in chapter 21. But verse 2 and 3, And I, John, saw, and I, John, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. I saw it. This is the goal. This is almost pure gold to him. And we'll see as we read on that it is like it's like pure gold to him. I, John, I saw it. The holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. You know, back in those days, they would get, they wear dresses and all this stuff to look beautiful and whatever, but they would be adorned in all kind of gold. And that's that's it. See, he's, she's adorned for him. She's like him. She's not just a bride. She's not just the wife of the land. She's adorned for him. It's all about him to her and his heart. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me. And there it is. You're looking at her. There she comes. There's the tabernacle of God. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And now, verse 9 through 11. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. See, this is amazing. I don't want to go into it. But in the book of Revelation, this guy's just dumped these things, and all of these trials are to purify us with gold. All, remember all the verses in the different places we've read today. That fire is to bring forth the gold. And guess what's the gold? It's her in his image. It's her coming down, having him in her. We'll see it in just a second. Um, <clears throat> the lamb, let's see, where am I? I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. In verse 18, and the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold. And the city, the city, the bride is pure gold. But it's a special kind of gold. It's so great. It's it's it is a perfect reflection of his nature and of his being. And the groom is rejoicing in her. You, it doesn't say it doesn't give you that. Trust me. Grooms rejoice in their bride on that day. And then verse twenty one. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, the way that they walked, or how they walked, pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And it said that about the walls, too. The foundation, the, the walls, transparent gold. Um, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God lighteneth, and the Lamb is the light of it, and the Lamb is the light. Of it. So he's seen in her, but but here's the thing: unless his nature is formed in us, then we will be seen. But when his nature is formed in us, then we're like. We're gold. It's gold. It's Christ to him. But it's so transparent that Jesus actually is being seen. And that's the, that rejoices the Father's heart. So I just have a few last statements. We, we lay down our lives. We do these different things. That is the Lamb. We do it to be Christian or we do it for God. I'm going to do this for God. I want to I want to do this for God. I want to, you know, lay down my life here. Or I want to sacrifice something or whatever. And that's it. And we never, if it really is gold, we never get with him and see the rejoicing that's happening in his heart. Um, and we never think about how special it is to his heart. We go, well, you know, I should, I should do this. Well, yeah, we should. I should, I should lay down my life. How about I should, I should release a feast of joy with him and then rejoice with him in it. He says, he says I found this gold coin and call neighbors and friends and everybody and rejoice with me. And uh, I wrote, we never think about how special it is to his heart like finding gold, like those prospectors. I, I find, I've been searching I've been searching for this and finally found it. And I wrote, but oh, the joy of finding even a small nugget, doing it for his joy too. Not just doing it because it's right, not just doing it because it's nature, but do, doing it for his joy, for God's joy. And just the final title, basically, God is prospecting for gold in us. But he's not just looking for the action he wants us to rejoice with him when we when christ is brought forth in us he wants us to join with him 
and it's like a feast. And that, in all of those cases in Luke 15, they didn't just rejoice. They came over and they had a big feast at a party. There was Jesus. Jesus came forth. See, and maybe we don't feel the party when we even allow Christ to live through us. But God does. Mm -hmm. He feels like throwing a party. We shouldn't stand out like the elder son. Let's pray. Father, we just ask you to continue to move in such a way that we find the heart of Jesus and that we find your heart and that we find the heart of the Spirit of God that, that in so doing, we're, we don't just go through the motions, but there, that we find your true reaction. And we, we're, not, we're not in heaven, as it were, to look at your face and watch you react. The only way we can really know this is to read your word and notice over and over and over. You call it precious. You, you, you rejoice. You, there's all these words that are used that, that clue us that this is such a big thing. And we always talk about wanting to please your heart and wanting to bless you. Well, you're blessed by Christ and we know that. But we need to go that extra step and just be with you and realize how big this is to you. Even if, if it be ever so small a nugget, how incredibly big even the smallest flake of Christ the Lamb through us rejoices your heart greatly. Help us to see this and to rejoice with you. In Jesus' name.